Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa for those of you who are new and I upload new videos two times a week on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And today's video with keeping with the theme of Valentine's Day, I'm going to be sharing with you guys four lessons that I have learned in my past relationships. So this video is a little bit different than what I normally film for you guys. Hopefully you guys can take a little bit of what my past has taught me and you can either implement it into something that you're currently dealing with the current situation or any future relationships that may come your way. Hopefully you can take one of these lessons and learn a little bit from me. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Relationship number one. Relationship number one was my first boyfriend at 13 years old and we were friends for a good time and then whenever I turned 13, like right around that time, we started dating and it was a good relationship. You know, it was my first relationship. So I didn't really know how to have a boyfriend, but I feel like we hung out, we would go to the mall, we'd go to the movies. And so moving forward, three and a half months or so into the relationship, my grandmother, who at the time was very, very ill, my grandmother had been dealing with Alzheimer's for quite some time now and she started declining so my family went to go visit her in the hospital and it was out of town so I told my boyfriend at the time I was like hey like my grandmother's not doing so well so I'm gonna be away for a couple of days so she really started declining once we were there at the hospital and I remember this was at night and I went down into the hospital lobby just to take a little bit of a break and I remember that I got a phone call from my boyfriend and so he gets on the phone and I answer and I'm like hey and right after he's like hey I need to talk to you about something this isn't working anymore like I want to break up and I was kind of in shock I was kind of blindsided as well because I didn't really know like what he was talking about or like why he would say it wasn't working anymore like everything seemed fine up until that point i kind of said what what do you mean and he was like yeah like i just don't think it's working out like we're breaking up i'm breaking up with you and he hung up i'm sitting there in the lobby of the hospital kind of in shock kind of trying to process what had just happened and so i was like you know what i I can't really deal with this right now so I'm gonna deal with it later like I've got bigger fish to fry like upstairs is my entire family and my grandmother is not doing very well so I went upstairs I didn't say anything to anyone I just kind of went upstairs and I was there with my family and a couple of hours later my grandmother passes away so of course you know there's that whole grieving period and up to that point that was the first person that was close to me that had ever passed away so that being the first situation that I was dealing with was kind of hard and especially at 13 because you know you're you're a young girl and you have a lot of emotions and you're just trying to process that. I remember that I just kind of put the whole breakup like in the back burner. I didn't really have time to process it, nor did I um, while I was dealing with the passing of my grandmother. So fast forward two weeks from the passing of her death and he calls me and he kind of apologizes and says, you know, I'm sorry that I did that. Like, I really want to make things work again. Like, please give me a second chance. So I was like, okay, like, I had mentioned before I hadn't gotten time to process the breakup yet so I was like sure like let's try this like you know it'll just go back to how things were before the breakup so during that first week that we had gotten back together I was getting to process what had happened a few weeks ago and I kind of realized that I didn't want to be with him I wasn't happy because whenever I needed someone he kind of bailed on me so up until that point I knew like you know a boyfriend's supposed to be there for you he's supposed to treat you nice he's supposed to be supportive and when I needed someone supported he wasn't there so I just realized that that wasn't something that I was looking for so I decided to break it off and there and then I kind of realized that the lesson that I pulled away from that first relationship was that you're stronger than you think you are so the point that I'm trying to make is that if you're ever in a situation where you're just not sure that you can do something or you're doubtful of something um, just remember that you're stronger than you think you are and you'll come out the other side 
better and stronger and hopefully this lesson is something that you guys can take into your life and not just in relationships but just kind of in everything just kind of remember that you are stronger than you think you are you know it's always mind over matter and don't doubt yourself so moving on to boyfriend number two all right so boyfriend number two happened two years later and i was dating this guy and this was back with myspace myspace was still a thing you guys if you guys remember who myspace was um leave a comment down below because yeah good old myspace days r.i.p but um so i was dating this guy for a couple of months and at the beginning of the relationship i knew that he had just gotten out of a relationship with his ex-girlfriend and this girl was honestly just not a nice girl. Like she was not a nice girl because she would constantly message me on my face and just talk trash to me and just was not a nice girl. And I don't deal with drama. Like I just, don't, I don't do drama. So I just like ignored her and I was like, whatever. Like I blocked her and I was like, I'm not dealing with you. But I knew that they were broken up. So I was like, okay, I'm not coming in between anything. So, you know, I, also talked to him and I was like, you know, are you sure that you guys are broken up? Like, I don't want to be coming in between anything. He's like, no, like we're done. And I was like, okay. Fast forward to about three and a half months into the relationship and he started being really distant and I confronted him about it and I was like, okay, like tell me like what's going on, what's happening. So he just told me that he wasn't sure if he wanted to be with me anymore and I it's like okay well is there anything that I did or you know is there anything that I can do to like remedy that and he was like you know what I just think that I need some time to figure it out so I gave him some time to you know figure out his emotions and I checked back in about a week after we had had the conversation and I was like you know like how are you feeling like what do you think like where where do you stand and he couldn't give me an answer so I was like okay like take another week to to figure it out and being in that limbo situation with someone especially when you're supposed to be in a relationship with them it's very difficult because you don't know where you stand with them and it kind of takes a toll on you so every night like I would literally cry myself to sleep and it wasn't healthy for me and I wasn't happy, like obviously it just was not a good situation. Towards the end of that second week, this girl reaches out to me again and she sends me a picture of them hanging out like at his house and I was very confused because I thought that he was taking this time to figure out how he felt about me come to find out that they had actually been seeing each other for the last month so right around the time he started acting kind of weird she took it upon herself to let me know that so for me being faithful in a relationship is something extremely important as soon as i saw that i just kind of flipped the switch and i was like you know what no i'm done like no more crying no more this like i deserve better than this so i called him and i told him i know and we're done you can have her and he really didn't have anything to say because he knew that he had been caught and he knew what he had put me through so i just cut the cord with that and i was like i'm done i'm better than this i deserve someone who is going to be sure about me the lesson that i learned there was that if someone is not sure about you be sure about them what I mean by that is you know you should be no one's second choice you should not be on the shelf for anyone if they're not sure about you then that's fine but you don't have to sit around and wait for them until they are sure about you you have the right to walk away from that and not feel as though you have given up on that relationship because clearly they don't know what they want so you should be sure enough in yourself to be able to walk away with that and know that you hold yourself to a higher regard than to be someone's second choice or to be someone's backup or to not be someone's first choice. If someone loves you and wants you in their life, they're going to make everything possible in order to have that happen. You know, you should deserve someone who chases you and who loves you and who isn't 
in limbo about, oh, I don't know if I want to be with you or not. No, if they love you, they should be willing to show that and show others that. So if they're not sure about you, be sure about them and know that you don't need that kind of <laughs> love in your life because that's not love at all. Moving on to relationship number three. So relationship number three was honestly polar opposite from the first two relationships and this guy was honestly a godsend um, because he was so sweet and so loving and thoughtful and I just can't say enough good things about him and we dated for a little over a year uh, about a year and two months or so and I was in my junior year of high school and he was I think in his freshman year of college um, and we had been friends for probably about a year before we started dating and then we started dating and it was great. He's very thoughtful, very romantic and just everything that you see like on Pinterest and Tumblr and like in the movies it's like relationship goals like that was this guy like he would bring me flowers and he would like write me letters like I'm just such a sucker for letters like letters are such a I think it's such like an old romantic detail but it's so sweet because people like take the time to like write you and we would write letters back and forth to each other anyway getting back on on track so once you get to a certain point in a relationship you kind of start to dissect it a little bit and you're like okay well where is this going you know where do I see this relationship going about 10 months into the relationship you know we kind of started discussing like future plans especially with you know him being in college and me the next year going off to college it just kind of rose a lot of questions as to what's going to happen what's going to happen with us and for him he had brought up the idea of marriage and that was just something that I didn't see for myself at that point in time. I just, I, you know, wanted to go off to college, do the college thing, like get a job, like, you know, kind of live my life according to those steps. And for him, he wanted to finish his college career, join the Marines and get married young. And I knew for me that that just wasn't what I envisioned for my future. So I kind of had to make the tough decision of breaking up because I knew that if we continued together, one of us was going to have to compromise on what we saw for our future for ourselves. I didn't think that that was fair to either of us because I didn't want ultimately to end up together and then potentially having resentment towards one another for having to compromise on our hopes and dreams and kind of having have to compromise what we envisioned for ourselves. So we broke up and it was an amicable breakup. He is, like I said, a very great guy. And the lesson that I learned from that was if you love something, set it free. And if it comes back, it's meant to be. And clearly, um, we did love each other very much, but it just wasn't meant to be because, you know, he went on and he lived his life and we have a couple of friends in common and we don't stay in touch or anything, but I know from our mutual friends that, you know, he's now happily married. He joined the Marines, so he got to live out his life and I'm very happy with the fact that I chose to live my life and seek my future, you know, I kind of wanted to go to college, you know, I'm happily here in Philadelphia. I've gotten to travel the world, which is one thing that I really wanted to do whenever we were having these discussions. And I am so happy that although it was a tough decision because on paper, he was literally everything that I wanted and in person as well is just in my heart I knew that if I decided to you know go that route of compromising to what he saw his future or possibly you know him compromising to what I saw for my future that one of us wasn't going to be happy and ultimately that wasn't going to be enough and that was going to cause strain in our relationship. So I think everything happens for a reason. I think the world kind of brings people into your space to teach you different lessons and at that time he was exactly what I needed because my two previous relationships weren't that great and they weren't the happiest of endings but with this relationship I'm definitely glad that I got to meet him. Relationship number four which is my last relationship, my most recent relationship. We were actually best friends all throughout high school and then also into college and in college we kind of had like this flirtation of like will they won't they kind of thing. Um, we went to two different colleges. He went to school in the central United States and I went to school on the east coast in Philly 
and so we were dating in college for long distance and the only reason that I decided to do long distance was because you know I obviously did love this person very much um, we were best friends so that kind of made it easier for me to to trust in a relationship long distance like I mentioned before being faithful in a relationship is something that's very important to me but with him that was never a question because I knew that he was my best friend and I was his and we would never hurt each other in that way so that was kind of a no-brainer with a relationship that's long distance there definitely comes a whole different slew of challenges and one being that you kind of have to put more effort into a long distance relationship and I'm someone who doesn't ask a lot of the person that I'm dating, but I do have obviously standards for my boyfriend. And we dated for about a year and a half, and this was all long distance. Of course, you know, during breaks throughout college, we would go and visit each other. I would go and visit him, or he would come and visit me, or we would just meet at home um, back in Houston because we both went to the same high school, so we both have our families living relatively close to each other. So we would get to see each other, and that was all great and fun and about halfway through our relationship the dynamics started to change a little bit. I just wasn't feeling the effort as much as I was the first half and like I said it's it's difficult whenever you're in a long distance relationship because you can't just, you know, go over and hang out with them or like just go to the grocery store. You just kind of do mundane things, but you're still there spending quality time. Like you, you don't have that when you're in a long distance relationship because you don't get to see that person very often. So you do have to make a bit more of an effort to let that person know that you care and that you're thinking about them or that you love them. So towards the second half of a relationship that kind of just started to decline and would mention to him and be like, hey, like, you know, I need you to try a little bit more. Like, I feel like you're not putting in the effort. We would try to make things work and then it would just kind of backslide to the same thing and we would just kind of have these reoccurring issues. I got to the point where we were arguing a lot. We really wouldn't talk to each other much and I was starting to resent him as a boyfriend and I didn't want that to spill over into our friendship and for me I value my friendships so 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 much um, there's something that I hold very near and dear to my heart so I knew that whenever we were hitting that mark in our relationship where I started to hold resentment towards him as a boyfriend and it started kind of spilling over into him as my friend I I didn't want that to happen so I knew that I kind of had to nip it in the butt and I decided to break up with him before that started to spill over into the friendship as well and it was very hard it was difficult because like I said I care a lot about my friends and I knew that this was a hard decision we kind of went into this phase where we didn't talk at all we would talk here and there but I still wanted to be friends and that's something that's very difficult because you're gonna have to mourn that relationship and then you know you can move forward with the friendship I'm glad that although that was a difficult decision I'm definitely glad that I I took it and I said what I needed to say because if I had it then we might not be friends today and we still keep in touch obviously we're not as close as we used to be before we started dating um, because the dynamics do change but I'm still glad to have him in my life and I'm glad that I get to call him my friend still for this relationship one thing that I learned that was very important was to set standards and to stick to them. So whenever I spoke up telling him that, hey, like, I need this, you're not meeting these needs, like, I need you to do something about that because especially in a long distance relationship, you need to feel connected, you need to feel like that person is thinking about you. Otherwise, it's like, well, are you even really dating? Um, you know, what's what's the point then? I think in any relationship, whether it's long distance or not, you definitely should have a set of standards and let that other person know, you know, like this is what I expect out of this relationship. This is what I expect out of a boyfriend. And if they keep falling short of that, it's okay to walk away from that. Don't feel bad for having these standards. By all means, make sure that they're realistic standards, not something like crazy and out there. You know, you need to feel loved. You need to have that security in that relationship and if you're not getting that 
you should speak up and hopefully you know you guys can work that out and come to a mutual agreement to where you both are happy within your standards but at the same time if you're not you have the right to walk away from it so those are the four lessons that I learned throughout my past relationships. I hope that you guys were able to take something away from this kind of sit down talk that I had with you guys. It was a little bit more personal and a little bit more in depth and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up down below and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell button so you don't miss whenever videos go live. I do upload two times a week on Sundays and on Wednesdays and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.